Okay, so uh, first of all, let's think about, say, a photon. Uh, and let's think about the energy of a photon. You might want to start a blank piece of paper so you sure have plenty of room for our beautiful flow charts. Uh, what's the unit for energy? Good. Okay. Now we need to see how the energy of a photon relates to its frequency. Uh, let's see, what's the symbol for frequency? Um, the symbol, um, F? Good, yeah, lowercase f. And what's the unit for frequency? Five volts per second. Good. There's a special name for that unit. That's a, that's a good way to interpret it. That's good that you remember that, cycles per second. Do you know what the name of that unit is? Um, no. So that's hertz. So it's also good to know that's hertz. But it's even better, like you said, to think of it as cycles per second. Sometimes people just say per seconds, but it's more intuitive to say cycles per second. Now, we need an equation that relates the energy of a photon and its frequency. This is a very key equation. Do you happen to know what the equation is that relates the energy of the photon and its frequency? E equals HF. You know that. OK, good. Let's write that over the arrow because that tells us how to go back and forth between those. So H is what we call Planck's constant. Uh, so we should look that up in our front cover again. 6.63 OK, so we can always look that up if we need it. All right, and then another concept we might need here is the wavelength of the photon. Well, what's our symbol for wavelength? And what's the unit for wavelength? Um, meters. Yeah, it's a length, so it's in meters. Sometimes you might say meters per cycle, but actually I think most people just say meters, so that's good enough. And now we need an equation. If we know the frequency, how do we find the wavelength? Or if we know the wavelength, how do we find the frequency? What's the equation that relates those? That's another equation that comes up all the time. you're thinking of? Yeah. Okay, that's on the right track, except the basic formula for a wave is V equals F lambda. Oh, I mean C equals F lambda. Okay, good. Or yeah. V. This is the formula that's true for any wave, but remember here we're thinking about a photon, which is a particle of light, or electromagnetic radiation, so you're right that we should just use C for the speed of light. We'll assume that we're in a vacuum, or air that's close to a vacuum. So we'll use this formula, C equals F lambda. This is a key formula that comes up all the time. OK, so that's our flow chart for photons. Notice there's something weird about photons, because uh, we're thinking of them as both a particle and a wave. We're thinking of the photon as a particle of electromagnetic radiation, but we're also talking about its wavelength. Well, through this whole uh, rest of the course, we're going to be seeing wave-particle duality, which is everything can be thought of as having both wave and particle characteristics. So how do you figure out the energy of a uh, certain particle, a certain photon particle? You would figure it out from here, but you can also figure out the wavelength. All right, now, on the same piece of paper, we should do another model of particles with mass. The most common example on these uh, problems is electrons, but particles with mass. Photons don't have mass. OK, um, so how should we think uh, about this? So um, let's start here with our idea of wavelength. And let's see, if we know the wavelength, let's figure out the momentum. Do you remember what the symbol is for momentum? That's something that we saw first last semester. P? Yeah, lowercase p. OK. All right, now again, here we have our wave-particle duality. Even though we're thinking of particles, we're going to see that every particle has wave characteristics. So particles have wavelengths. 
So we need to know how to find the wavelength if you know the momentum of something. This is what's called, I think, the de Broglie wavelength. This is the de Broglie wavelength. OK, so the equation for the de Broglie wavelength is lambda p equals h. And here's our Planck's constant again. So this is another key formula. This lets you find the wavelength of a particle with a mass. All right, and you can already see where students start to get messed up here, because notice, how do you find the wavelength of a particle with a mass is totally different from how you find the wavelength of a photon. If you're working with a photon, you would use this flow chart. But if you're working with something with mass, like an electron, you would use this flow chart. So there's two completely different charts. All right, now if we know the momentum, it would be nice if we could find the speed or velocity. What's our symbol for velocity? V. And what's the unit for that? Well, do you remember, what's the relationship between momentum and velocity? Mv. Yeah, that's just the definition of uh, momentum, so it's good that you remember that. The momentum equals m times v. Uh, now, this is only if you're not going too fast. If you're going too fast, you have to use relativistic momentum, but I don't think in your course you're really covering that much. So as far as your course is concerned, you're going to be going slow enough that you can always use this formula, p equals mv. But you might have noticed on some of the homework problems, Oftentimes on the homework problems, they'll say the speed is moderate, so you don't need relativistic momentum. And all they mean is that you can use this formula here. I don't think you're covering the other formula in your class. All right. Um, now if we know the velocity. It would be nice to find the kinetic energy. Uh, what's the unit for kinetic energy? Joules. <coughs> because it's a type of energy. Good. Well. If we know the velocity, how would we find the kinetic energy? One half mv squared. All right, good. So you can see the way the flowchart works is that above each arrow, we want to put the formula that relates the concepts. All right, you can see how these problems can get tough because you have to string together a whole bunch of formulas in a row to actually solve it. So it helps to have them all in one place. All right, then we can focus on the electric potential energy. Because again, usually we're going to focus on things with charges here, like electrons and protons. So we have our electric potential energy. The electric potential energy, which is also in joules. So what's the relationship between these? Well, we're going to use conservation of energy. If you're gaining kinetic energy, that must come from drawing down your potential energy. Or if you're losing potential energy, it must be stored as uh, uh, potential energy. So that tells us so that tells us however your kinetic energy is changing, that's going to be the change in your potential energy. Um, so if you're gaining 10 joules of kinetic, that's because you're losing 10 joules of potential. Or if you're losing 10 joules of kinetic, that's because you're gaining 10 joules of potential. And you know I like to use dots to show magnitudes. So we're saying these are equal in magnitudes. One will be positive and one will be negative, because one's a gain and one's a loss. But they'll be equal in magnitude, so we'll use the dots. All right, and then there's one more thing in our flowchart, which is how do we find the electric energy? Well, that helps uh, to know that. We have to know the electric potential. Uh, so we can talk about the electric potential difference. Do you remember what the symbol is for the electric potential difference? That's taking us back to the start of the semester. Um, U? Now that would be the potential energy. Uh, so we, I'm in the U? That would be the energy change. Uh -huh. So this, we can, I think we talked about this at the start. The important thing here is potential energy and potential energy difference are two different things. So it's, not, it's, it's a bad thing that the scientists use the same name for both of these. Uh, but these are two different things. This is the potential energy. And this is the potential difference. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm still not putting that right. This is the potential energy and this is the potential. So it might not seem like it, but leaving out the word energy makes all the difference here. There's a big difference between energy and potential. Potential energy and potential are different things. This is what we use the symbol delta V for. Oh, yeah. We used our symbol delta V for this. Uh, and the unit for this is the volt. So we need a formula. What's the formula that relates delta U and delta V? Not pretty much. What 
is a uh, what is a volt? Remember that volts are joules per coulomb. Mm -hmm. So this should be charge times delta V, or test charge times delta V. So we're going to have to start by remembering back to some of the concepts from earlier in the course. So the energy difference is the charge times the potential difference. The energy difference is the charge times the potential difference. You can see that's right, because uh, what are the units for charge? And we just said the units for delta V are joules per coulombs. Well, if you take coulombs times joules per coulombs, you get the joules, which is what we need over here. OK, so it's important to realize that potential and energy are different things. So that would give us uh, that and uh, the formula over here. So that's the end of our uh, flow chart.